Hello everybody, I am sick and tired of all these boring tutorials relating to Roblox Studio, and to that I say, I am here to quench your thirst for a sufficient tutorial and guide for Roblox Studio. Firstly, I am going to show you the general basics regarding the movement tools. So let's place down a part. The dragger tool is self-explanatory, it allows you to grab and drag each part. The dragger allows you to use your mouse and grab the part. You can press 1 as a hotkey to quickly select dragger tool. The move tool allows you to move a part based around the three axes available within Roblox Studio. You can press 2 as a hotkey to quickly select. The scale tool allows you to resize a part based around the three axes available within Roblox Studio. You can press 3 as a hotkey to quickly select. The scale tool has some special keybinds of its own, which change the way the part is scaled. Holding shift disables the snapping of the stud increments. And holding control changes the scale direction to mirror, making it scale on both sides on a parallel angle. Holding the alt key will scale the model uniformly, meaning that it will scale as a whole, not stretch. The next tool will be the Rotate tool, which you can quickly select using 4. The Rotate tool will spin a part around the axis at the increments set in the Model tab. The next tool is the Transform tool, which can be quickly selected using 5. This tool works by generally combining all four prior tools into one, allowing for an all-in-one movement tool. I personally don't find use for this, but preference is a big part of development and what is comfortable for you to use. We are done with all the tools, let's move on to the next section. Firstly let's talk about collisions, this simply doesn't allow parts to exist within one another, and will forcibly push another out if duplicated, with this disabled you can put parts inside of other parts. Next tool is joint surfaces. I don't entirely know the use case for this one, as there are multiple snapping tools existing on Roblox already, however it could be useful for knowing what surfaces are touching. Let me mess up the stud sizing here. You may find yourself in this position often, where a part is almost an even stud, but it is a few decimals off. Here is how you can fix that. In the View tab, you will want to open Explorer and Properties. Inside of Explorer you can click on Part, or just click on the part within the workspace. Which you will want to change these properties. Set Orientation to 0 and Size to an even number, in my instance, 4, 1, 4. The part is now flat and 1 to 1 ratio square, not including y-axis. It is important to keep a clean stuff workspace for general part placement, as a clear structure will help you form builds much easier. Remember this as I will refer to it later on in the video. What I have selected now is the pivot axis, it allows you to change the axis at which parts will be rotated, moved, and scaled. Now that we've discussed how to move things, let's go over all the parts in Roblox. Roblox has CSG parts, which stands for Constructive Solid Geometry. These are quite literally the building blocks of Roblox. Roblox has five base blocks, which are parts, spheres, wedges, corner wedges, and cylinders. These can all be placed down and manipulated to create appealing structures. This next tool I'm going to show you is the snapping tool, it is very convenient as it allows for you to easily and quickly snap parts to edges or centers of other parts. Since there isn't much to talk about in this moment, I'm going to discuss some keybinds, pressing Ctrl D will duplicate parts, and holding Ctrl while selecting allows you to click multiple parts at once. You can see here, the wedge won't snap to this side, that is because snapping only works when it's connected to a part what has a full 90 degree angle. To fix this you can simply rotate the wedge, if not in your favor, you can rotate it temporarily to snap it to the part edges, and then switch it back. A quick way to rotate parts is to use Ctrl R to rotate, and Ctrl T to flip parts. 
This structure has no real inspiration or use, it is just an example of each part put into a shape of sorts. So that I can explain how unions work. I'm going to use the trick I showed earlier in a practical environment, setting the cylinder C-frame position to the sphere's C-frame. This next part is a super simple section, but I'm here to cover every aspect of Roblox Studio. This color sheet allows you to change each part's color. There is a more in-depth way of doing this in the properties. The next section is the Material tab. This allows you to set any part to one of the pre-installed Roblox materials. I will show you how to import your own PBR textures and materials next episode. The lock tool allows you to select parts which make them unselectable with your mouse. While unlock all simply unlocks all. The anchor toggle should be turned on in most cases. You can use alter to toggle it to part selected. The anchor tool makes it so parts and objects are not affected by gravity or physics in a playtest. Let's perform an experiment here. We e e e e Wow that was so fun, anyway. Let's move on to solid geometry, I'll mainly be discussing union and negate. As they are most commonly used. Using negate is like a cutting tool. You must select a part and then toggle it into a negatable selection and then you must select other parts. A good way of thinking of this is with a body part and tool part. The tool part affects the body part, in this case the negation is the tool part. When selected all parts, you press union. Using union on its own is just joining parts together to create a single part. Typically you will need to activate use part color in properties to change the color of a union. Unions will not behave like models, they will stretch and not be scaled uniformly. I'm going to show a good use case of negations, I will work my normal pace here, so I may move faster here, try to keep up. What I'm doing here is making a obtuse angle bend with wedges that have a flush corner, typically this isn't possible without either blender or negations. Here is a good educational example, Roblox has two movement axes, local and world, local axis will move to the pivot orientation of the part, however world will move on the general XYZ axis. You can toggle this by right clicking or pressing Ctrl L. What I've selected here in the view tab is wireframe. This shows the topology view of Roblox. Topology is the make of each part. Each 3D part is comprised of polygons and this allows you to view them. This next part is super important, so follow along carefully. When using unions, it's important to note that Roblox uses CPU-based retopology. As I explained earlier, game models are made up of polygons which increase in density and detail, and also making games laggier if there is too many. Hope you caught that. 
When having the Explorer and Properties tab open, you can have it in any optimal space, side of your screen, docked into studio, or even outside of the base tab on a separate monitor to optimize space. Let's move on to a practical assessment in which we will use the information I have previously explained and put it into a practical format. Let's make an arch in a blockier style to start off for this tutorial. We can come back and edit it more next video. When building it's always a good idea to have a rig as size reference or any blocked example. Most rigs are 5 studs tall and 4 studs wide. Let's make an inset by 0.2 studs. We can do this efficiently by using the stud increments in the model tab, setting it to 0.1. While keeping things blocky, it's pretty optimal to stay ahead of yourself when building. Keep in mind the shape and reference you have in your mind. Here I am adding inset and details to what would simply just be a rectangle. Taking your time and putting effort and care into how things are shaped will have a positive outcome. This is a form of art, take it slow. I am adding a base part to be negated for the arch cutout hole. You can optimize your time and build efficiently by copy and pasting parts that would be identical. I am adding the cylinder tool part, but to add a more unique shape, I am going to union it first to shape it ununiformly, allowing it to stretch out a bit more, providing a gothic shape. Now that we have a general arch build made, let's give it a bit more height depth. It is always good to give your builds depth so they feel more alive than if it were just default blocks. You can use wedges like this to soften corners efficiently, they provide a more artistic design to the builds too. I'm going to try adding a window design to this, keep in mind later on. I delete this portion of the build. If you are following this like a one-to-one -one build tutorial, you can avoid building further. Sit back and listen to the music, you earned a rest. Since there's no portion here that would require teaching or education, I would like to tell you more about myself and what I do. 
I am the lead environmental artist at QWork Games and the world builder for DBZ Exodus. I have over a decade of experience and I want to create an equal playing field for all developers equally. I hope you have a better understanding on Roblox Studio as a whole, I urge that you take your time to study and understand these things in your own time, they should have an explanation in Studio when you hover over the items, be sure to read them. Please let me know what sort of things you would like to learn in the future. I am always willing to lend a hand and provide feedback to others' work. You can contact me on Twitter at Urelity or my Discord at Jupiter. If you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know if I should continue or make more tutorials around other topics, such as custom materials, lighting, general tips and tricks, make sure to like and subscribe, if this ends up being good I will make more in-depth tutorials.